Hello, this video is going to show you how you can remap um, any Power Query related file that you've obtained from us uh, to point it to the data source on your local drive um, or folder that you're storing it in. Now, this is just a demonstration file that I've already linked. So I keep all of my files in Dropbox, which are on the C drive. Um, so you can see here that I'm using a football data example here, but it doesn't really matter. It could be the same for racing. I just have a slightly different uh, folder name. It's just called years. Uh, within FBD, I have two uh, files that I use, current and historic. Um, and that is where the files are mapped to. So what I'm going to show you here is how you can repoint these to the files that you choose on your drive. So the first thing to bear in mind is different versions of Excel will have slightly different uh, layouts in terms of where the, the buttons are um, and where the, um, the option menus are, are situated. I'm using 365, so the older versions of Excel, things will be in a slightly different place. But it's very simple. Um, to do once you familiarize with how Power Query works, which is on the data tool. Uh, the easiest way to do this uh, is to go to um, the Get Data tab, and then we've got Data Source Settings. So you select Data Source Settings, and that is where the data is pointed to. Now, if you obviously want to change the settings, you simply would click the Change Source button. Click that button, you can then either type or click browse and navigate to the, uh, the folder that you want to use. Now, it, it simplifies things if you keep the files in the same format in terms of naming conventions. So they need to be current and historical for, sorry, historic for, um, for FBD. Um, although if you want to rename them something differently, you can and just, um, just remap that within the Power Query editor itself. But that is by far and away the simplest way to do it is uh, nav navigate to data source settings and they can be found in a number of places but for the recent versions of excel they're here um, if i go to launch power query editor you'll also see it here data source settings and again that might be vary depending on the version of excel you need but that's what you want to find you want to find data source settings and you can make your amendments from here so that's how you remap to the same files, but in different folders on your location. So if you want to save them on your C drive in my documents and a um, data storage such as Dropbox, it's entirely up to you as long as you remap to the um, to the folders. Once you've remapped, all you need to do is click close and load. And again, that might be in a different position or a different menu uh, under a different menu option within the Power Query editor. Uh, but for, for me, it's in home and close and load. You select close and load. I've not made any changes, so it's not going to do anything. But what it would do is bring up the um, the editor and the connections on the right hand side. And that would show you your rows loading. So very simple. That's all you need to do. Once you've installed and mapped it to your um, your local drive, you can uh, go into the Power Query editor. And then if you want to put any um, formatting around the, the columns. So if you want to put any filtering or additional columns, you can do so within your Power Query editor yourself here. And then, like I said, you just need to close it and load. So very important, I will tag this video onto the front of any product videos and keep it as a standalone. Um, we don't really offer any ongoing support in terms of local setup. So I would always refer you to um, the Microsoft forums or simple Google or YouTube searches where you would find more specific help with um, remapping. But from the video that I've just done for you, that should be all you need to repoint any file that you procure or obtain from us to the data source on your local uh, device or drive. Hi there, welcome to this product video for the Poisson um, non-power and power query versions. So Essentially, the, the file works the same way. It's entirely up to you as the user how the data pulls into it. So this one that I've got on screen here is the um, non-Power Query version. So what that means is that you are responsible for updating the data in this year's FBD tab here. 
Um, all you need to do is export the data from, um, from the website itself, from the fixtures and results um, output, as many leagues, many seasons as you want in there, uh, all the columns, which will be up to BT, and then the BU and BV just need to be dragged to the bottom to ensure that those are populated and calculating correctly. Now, it should be the case that those all to populate because this is set as a table. Um, all you need to do is paste in from uh, A1, so include the headers from your output, uh, paste in all the way down um, to the bottom. And then if you have any additional rows, so if you're pasting a data set that's smaller than this one, in fact, what I'm going to do is chop this right down after the video, so it always will be. I'll just leave it so there's a couple of rows in there. Um, but that will auto populate all the way down and so should your calculations. Just keep an eye on that. Um, that's the maintenance from, from your side. That's all that's needed. So that's the um, that's how to manage the power, um, the non-power query version. Uh, you can input, like I said, as many seasons and leagues and a bit more control over it. If you want the um, power query version, I'm just going to open that one up. It pretty much looks identical. Um, other than the tab that controls and contains all of the, um, the data is hidden away because you don't need it. All you need to do is refresh this Power Query um, box. Now, as already shown in um, the, uh, the, the Power Query connection video, you just obviously need to repoint uh, the Power Query to the files on your local drive named Current Historical. Um, and then what I have done in here, just so I can show you in the queries, you can see there are only 78,000 uh, rows in here. And the reason for that is, uh, I'm just going to bring this over, it's on my other screen. Um, I've put a lock on the seasons. So we go across to the seasons column here. There is a, um, there's a filter on here. OK, so it means that it's only pulling in the last, well, from 2021 onwards. So that means anything before that is not shown. It may be that those are in your files because it might be that those files on your drive are feeding into other um, other Power Query um, dashboards or tools that we might have created or created yourself. <clears throat> but I don't think anything that far back is uh, relevant. So you can change that filtering here and just click on the cog. Uh, and it's got all of the seasons in here. So you can obviously delete or add in and change uh, as, as time goes by. If you want sort of 2021 becomes less relevant, you can take it out and replace it with the uh, the, the new, newer seasons that, as they come. So that's how you manage and restrict the, um, the outputs to this file. Now the file itself, so whether using the Power Query version or the non-Power Query version, they work exactly the same. That's just how you prefer to control your input. One way you're just controlling a file and then refreshing it here. Uh, the other way you're just pasting it in. Either way, all you need to do is export from fixtures and results and then either feed it directly into this file if it's the um, non-Power Query version or uh, maintain your current and historic files uh, and then run the update when you come to open this file. So how it works, so I originally designed a Power Query file for a user based on his request where he wanted to look at the most recent games. So we've done a few other, um, sorry, Poisson file, not Power Query. It is a, this is now a Power Query file. Uh, yeah, he wanted to analyze Poisson. Um, so I built a bespoke file for him, which he's been using for a couple of years now. Um, and then I've just enhanced it really. Uh, and he's given his thumbs up for me to commercialize it. So I'm going to give you a run through and demonstration of how to use it. So you've got all of your leagues in here. Um, so any that aren't included within your data set will be grayed out. Um, you can select those from uh, the, uh, the slicer on the side here. And what it will do is bring up the games in these leagues that are due to happen, <coughs> happen in the next week. OK, it will exclude games that have already been played because you don't need to analyze those. Um, and as you can see here, you can toggle and change the games that you want to focus on. So I've got it focused on Leeds Middlesbrough. Uh, if we wanted to look at Luton Stoke, 
Uh, <coughs> just need to change it from the toggle here. And you want to make sure that the current season is selected from uh, this slicer at the top as well. And those are the three main things that you need to do to control this file. Select your league, select your season you're interested in, and select the teams that you want to focus in on. And those are on these tabs, which I'll come to in a second. This, <coughs> this landing page, the matches page, gives you an overview of this game. So Luton v Stoke, as I said, it's highlighted this for you. You can see all of the other games that are due to be played today, tomorrow, and at the weekend. They fall within that seven-day window. Um, and we're looking at four different topics. Again, these are in more detail on these tabs. So you're looking at the halftime season. Um, you can see all of these columns of the calculations. They're all shown on here, so you can see them. So it's the home attack, the home defence, away attack, away defence. Um, the home team, home and away attack, uh, the away team. Uh, home and away attack, the home goal expectation and the away goal expectation and then the expected goals. Now this is half time, season to date, so it includes just this season. Then we have half time or first half, six game, that can be toggled here. So if you want to look at the last 10 games, it will do so here. Now this, this is obviously dependent, so at the stage we're at the minute, most teams in this league have played about seven, eight, maybe nine home games or games. Uh, home or away. If you only load into your Power Query or if you're using the non-Power Query version, the um, the data tab, if you're only lo loading in the current season, this will be irrelevant. It'll only pick up the games that you have in there. It can go up to 100. So if you wanted to include the last three, four seasons, you can look at the last 100 games for Luton. So if I put it onto 50, for instance, um, they've obviously not played 50 games this season, but you will see in here their last 50 home games and 50 away games for Stoke. But a reasonable number, sort of six, seven, eight, really looking at recent form. I set that back to six. Um, so yeah, you can see here the expected first half goals, 0.6, uh, using the most recent form model, um, last six games, 0.63. And again, like I said, if we toggle this, we can change it. You can look at how that changes, goes down slightly, looking at eight games. Look at the last three games. Uh, drops, in, drops further, 0.46, okay? So that's for you to use, or you can just look at the season today. And then we've got the full-time season, full-time six games, so exactly the same, same calculations, but these are based on the full 90 minutes. Um, so expected goals in this game using the full season data, 2.17. If we're looking at the last six games, when Luton have been home, Stoke been away, 1.8, so slightly lower. So between the two of them, they've, um, they're trending lower scoring matches um, overall, slightly higher in the first half. Uh, you can then look down and see all of the other games that are due to be played today and at the weekend. But if I bring you onto these other tabs, um, they're fairly self-explanatory, what we've got in here. So if you're looking at the full time, uh, this is using the six game analysis or however many games you want to look at. So we've got all of the teams down here, how many goals they've scored, their average, uh, their attacking strength. And then you've got uh, the away team and then you've also got the summary here. Um, so you can see here coloured uh, where green is the most likely through to red, the most unlikely. So how many goals are expected? This is full time. So you can see here the highest one is Luton for uh, one, Stoke for a nil, and then that transfers over into the likelihood of correct scores. Now the thing with Poisson, it does, um, it perhaps tends to over, um, over predict on scores like 2-1, one, 1-1, one, one. whereas our score predictions are a separate model. We don't use Poisson calculation for the score predictions on our website. This is purely Poisson. Um, but it gives you the likelihood based on the season's data to date um, of these score lines. And now, obviously, as with other things, it's data. This is pure data. It doesn't take into account um, new managers, travel, um, injuries, suspensions, new signings. Obviously, those aren't accounted for in here. So this is a pure data calculation. Um, but you can see we've broken it down by um, the percentage chance of each one of the outcomes here. Um, and that gives you the um, true odds, if you like, and then below it, actual, if the actual odds are available, so within the database, I've updated this this morning, so this one's through the Power Query. Obviously, if you're pasting in from the website, it pulls out the um, 
the average bookmaker odds uh, for Luton as of this morning. Obviously, those as well will change on the way up to kickoff. So you can quickly see where there's disparity. So Luton are priced higher than what they should be, according to Poisson. Uh, Stoke are priced well below where they should be, again, according to Poisson. And that's using the full-time season data. And we can look at the over uh, under as well, 0.5 through to 3.5. And again, it will pull these odds through average bookmaker odds. And you can do a comparable to um, where it should be based on the percentage likelihoods. Same again as well for both teams to score. So the overall chance based on um, season data to date, yes and no. So a heavy swing towards no, which means that that deems there is value in there. The other tabs are all exactly the same. It's just the data range that we're using. So full time, uh, sorry, that was six game. I apologize, I did say that was season to date. This is the season to date, which obviously is a bigger sample size and the bigger your sample size, um, the more accurate, I would say, although you're not picking up recent trends, which is why the argument could be had to look at the last sort of five, six games. But season to date, um, these are the, um, the outcomes. Same calculations, so it's, it's user's choice really, which, which you prefer or if you use a combination of all. Uh, and then the last two are the same as the full time, but we're just looking at half time data here. So first half scores. So usually you would see a heavier weighting around the nil nil one nils for obvious reasons. Um, nil nil 53.3%, one nil 27.7. So it's saying between the two of these 80% likelihood of it being even nil nil or one nil to the home team. Um, we don't include half time odds within our data set, so that's why those are blanked out here. But you can see what the true odds are. So then, if you're looking at the betting exchange or bookmaker prices, you can obviously make a comparable between the two. Um, so that's half time six games and then half time season to date. Okay, um, so yeah, that's how we control it all, really. So if I change this to 10, if I go into half time that changes to 10 and the analysis changes. So in effect, what you're doing by selecting 10 games at this stage of the season, you should be getting um, the same or similar um, outputs. Uh, let me just change it. How many, I'm not sure how many they've played. It's gonna be less than 12, maybe it's eight. But obviously what we're doing there is we're, where, where we've got games that are where this is higher than what they've played, we're, we're looking into last season because I have last season's data in there. If I didn't have it in my source files, these figures would be exactly the same. And obviously if you're using the non-power query version and you're just pasting in the current season, any games number that you pick that's above the amount played, these will match like for like. Okay, um, I think that's pretty much explained the sheet. Um, this will be, like I said, this, this, you're watching this video because it will be released. Uh, a couple of users that have had similar or the same found it very useful. Hopefully you can see the value in it um, and um, we'll find use for it. Thank you very much.